Hey guys, it's your girl Risa coming um, to wrap up my evening. Um, I started out with a chit chat, a hangout, and a few of the ladies came and joined. And um, and um, sorry about that, got distracted. But, um, I want to thank Bernie Vision, It's Christy Love, Cece Brown, Pink Sugar Mama, Janine Wilson, and, um, Cynthia Davis Murphy for coming and joining me in the chit chat. Um, we gotta, this, we gotta come up with some questions and some topics, you know, um, anything about life. So it is, y'all. I'm back, y'all. Back to yawning. It is 1 a.m., and I just wanted to come and wish you guys a wonderful night, a beautiful morning, a peaceful rest, and um, just know that I love and care for you guys, and I want to thank all of the ladies, and I pray that God enter the room wherever you may be and just be a blessing upon you. He is a blessing, but just pour out blessings upon you. May he heal your body, give you strength, give you peace, Everything that your heart desires, as long as it lines up with his word, we thank you, God. Um, we will do it again. Uh, I truly enjoyed myself. And so I'm going to, I, I was supposed to read a scripture, but I just got to talking, y'all. I'm not run my mouth. And so for um, July 25th, uh, it is 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. You are a new creation. Therefore, if any person is in Christ, the Messiah, he is a new creation, a new creature altogether. The old previous moral and spiritual condition has passed away. Behold, the fresh and new has come. That's 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. When you are born again, God consecrates or dictates not dictates, dedicates, dedicates you to a new and different you, the one for which you were intended in the first place. He has a use for you. Now, sometimes we go down the wrong path. You know, there's right and wrong. Sometimes we choose the wrong way. And so to get to our destiny is a lot harder sometimes than it would if we had to just follow God. Not to say that when we follow God, we don't have obstacles. But there may not be so many obstacles, you know. So, you get a fresh new opportunity for service. When Christ comes to live inside of you, an imperishable seed is planted within you. Everything you need to be completely healthy and whole is in him. And if it is in him, it is in you. But it is in seed form, and seeds have to be watered and nourished. In order to grow and produce fruit. You do this by reading and studying the word of God. And being a doer of the word. Don't let the seed lie dormant inside of you. Be the fresh new creation God wants you to be. You are a new creation. Hmm. I know you guys hear me say let God come in. Let him just renew your mind. with his word by picking up his word and reading it um just talking to him and just letting him just bless you i know god there's different ways of being fed you can feed yourself with gospel music you can feed yourself most of all with the bible you can feed yourself with talking to him and um talking books and things like that and let it change you we are in a society right now that it is so easy for us to lose ourselves, the self that he created us to be. It is so hard to be the nice person. You know, they say, what they say, nice people don't win, but we always win because we get the blessing from God himself. It's not from man, it's from God himself. When you let him handle, when you don't lose yourself, when you don't use your words to destroy somebody, when you don't 
do mean and hateful things. Yes, we fall. We have our weaknesses. We have our days where we flip out and um, we get angry. We get depressed. We get frustrated. We get moody. God already knows that. He already knows it. But even in the middle of those situations, can you recognize that there is a need, that you are in need to be changed or you need help, that you can't do it by yourself? You know, just think about those days when you have temper tantrums, how your entire household changed because of your mood. Is this, that's just, you, you're, when you do that, and this, I'm speaking for myself because I have seen myself when I don't want to be bothered or something has really truly ticked me off, how just my mood can trickle down through the whole house. But just think about how that trickle down, that affects everybody. And those are seeds that you're planting. And we have to get out of that. We have to say, you know, Lord, I may not feel my best right now, but help me, Lord, to put on my best, to do my best, to say the right things, even when I don't feel like it. We have to ask him to come in and help us. You are a new creation. The old person that um, it was supposed to die and not live again is no longer there. You know, our flesh may die, but our spirit lives on in Jesus' name forever and evermore. We thank him for that. We thank him, God. It is a scary thing to think about leaving this earth, but you know what? You got to know that there's something better. There's something better. This is all that we know. Forever how many years we have been on earth, this is all that we have known. But we look forward to living our lives, living the rest of our lives here, letting God guide us. Let him come and just bless us. Let him use us. Let him fight our battles. Watch him work. Watch how he change our situations. Watch how he turn our mess into a miracle. Watch how he turn our test into a testimony. Watch him. Just let him do it. How he bless you. We were talking on the hangout about um, Cece's blessing, you know, of her home and how it all came about. You know, we may have a plan in our heads of how we're going to do things, but we don't know how God is going to operate. And he always seems to show up and show out on us. You know, when you believe in God for a home and you believe in God for a promotion, if you don't be totally specific, but you got to stop putting the limits on the Lord. You know, they say you got to be specific with God, but you got to think about too. When you be totally specific, when I want to have this job at AT and T, you just gave limits to God. You don't know what kind of um, limits we put on Him with the things that we say. But God, I want the job that You have for me, the one that um, is gonna pay my bills, the one that's gonna give me overflow, the one that I'm gonna have benefits to take care of my family. You know, one that I'm gonna be able to uh, enjoy and share who you are with them and just be a blessing in every way. When we ask those things, it's not about just getting a job that's gonna pay money, but to be in the right place at the right time. Not only am I going to be blessed, but everybody in that building is going to be blessed. God is going to show up and do some things. Those are the kind of prayers that we need to put out. You know, because we have so many people in this world that just don't know what's going on. Just don't know. Just don't know what to say, what to do, what to put on their bodies. Don't know what to do. Just clueless. Just, just don't know. Just have given straight up. Do y'all hear me? Just have to say, bump it. I don't know. Don't care. I'm going to do it this way. But you know what? You can't judge folks. You look at people that have, you know, done certain things. And you be like, why? Really, though, why? 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 What is the other part of that equation that will tell you to turn around and look at yourself? Is this something that I want to do or say to somebody? Really and truly, is it going to really change that person when I say this to you? Or is it going to make me even more frustrated because you could give a hill of beans about what is coming out of my mouth? What is going on? Am I going to do that? Or I'm going to bite my tongue and give it to the Lord. Lord, I'm getting ready to say some real foul stuff. And I know I have a choice to do that or to give it all to you. So I'm going to choose the best result. And that's give it to you, Lord. Because I'm getting ready to chew the fat. I'm going to chew on my tongue. I'm getting ready to blast this person out. I'm getting ready to go no hold, no holes barred. I'm getting ready to say what I want to say. Do you hear me? But is it going to give you glory? Hmm. Is it going to bless me? Hmm. 
I don't think so. So, Lord, I'm going to ask you to just take over the situation. I give it to you. As they say, take the wheel, Lord, because I'm getting ready to drive right off the side of this bridge. I'm getting ready to go all the way. I don't want to do that because I can't take those words back. No matter how much you may say, I'm sorry, you can't take those words back. You know, sticks and stones may break my bones, and words do too, okay? <sighs> so, yes, we got to be made a new creature. Letting all those old things go and letting God come and bless us. Rest for your soul, Matthew 11:28. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden and overburdened, and I will cause you to rest. Come to me with all your problems, everything that is heavy on you. I will cause you to rest. I will release you. I will just lay you down and just rock you right on the sleep. I will cause you to rest. I will ease and relieve and refresh your soul. Just as you can be involved in outward activity, you can be involved in inward activity. God wants not only to enter into his rest, in your body, but in your soul as well. To me, finding rest, relief, ease, refreshment, recreation, and blessed quiet for my soul means finding freedom from mental activity. It means not having to consistently try to figure out what I should do, what I should do about everything in my life. I don't have to do that. Try to come up with an answer I don't have. I don't have to worry. Instead, I can remain in a place of quiet rest. At the end of a trying day, a tiring day, you can experience this peace and rest by going to Christ and allowing him to relieve and refresh your soul. What a wonderful privilege that is. Rest for your soul. There are so many people in this world, and everybody may have a different problem. And just know that God is so big that each and every one of us, at any point in time during the day, when you need rest, you have the opportunity. Go to him and let him give you rest. Talk to him. Ask him for help. Confess your sins. Talk to him about whatever is going on that is bothering you. And let him bless you. Let him work you over. Let him knock out all the kings. Let him... Change your thought press. Let him change your thought process. Let him change your speech. Look to what is unseen. Colossians 3 and 12. Clothe yourselves, therefore, as God's own chosen ones. His own picket. His, his, his own pick representative who are purified and holy and well beloved. By God himself, by putting on behavior marked by tender-hearted pity and mercy, kind feeling, a lowly opinion of yourselves, gentle ways and patience, which is tireless, and the long-suffering and has the power and endurance, whatever comes with God's temper, Colossians 3 and 12. Let's see, it says, close yourselves, therefore, as God's own chosen ones. Purified and holy and well-beloved, tender-hearted, pity and mercy, kind feeling, a, low, a lowly opinion of yourselves, gentle ways, patience, and patience. Okay? When you pray for other people, it may seem that they got worse before they got better. The devil wants to discourage you from believing that God is answering your prayers. The Apostle Paul said that he learned not to be discouraged even when going through terrible trials he said to look to the things that are unseen not to the things that are seen keep believing and the power of the holy spirit will fill you with joy and peace until you are overflowing with hope see romans 15 and 13 always trust god to answer your prayers even if it feels as though he is not there he is always there he sits high and he looks low and he has his eye on you. 
He knows everything that's going on. He just wants to work things out, not only in your favor, but everybody that's involved in your situation. Let him bless you. Let him pour out blessings on you. Let him wrap his arms around you and just squeeze out all the negative and just comfort you and fill you with all his blessings, his goodness, his love, his patience, his kindness. Let him work his way. Clothe yourself. Therefore, as God's own chosen one, his own chosen one, tender-hearted, pity, and mercy, kind feeling, a lowly opinion of yourself, gentle ways, patience, look to what is unseen. Thank you, Lord. Be thankful and ignore distractions, Matthew 17 and 8. And when they raised their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. Ignore distractions. Keep your eyes on him. No matter what it may look like, he is still in control. So it may look like the fires is on fire, but it is still in control. It takes one breath for the Lord to just change that whole situation. Just all he, just let him come. Our own flaws can distract us from keeping our eyes on Jesus. This is for me. If we think too much about what is wrong with us, we forget what God can do through us. If we look too much at what we lack or don't have, we will forget to be thankful for what we have. The Bible says to look away from all that would distract us from focusing on Jesus. Hebrews 12 and 2. If your faith begins to waver, quickly get your eyes on Jesus, who is the source of your faith and the incentive for your belief. Remember, he endured the cross, despising and ignoring the shame of it for the joy of winning you to him. He promises to bring your faith to maturity and perfection, ignoring the distractions and being thankful. First. Um, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 19. Be happy in your faith and rejoice and be glad-hearted continually. Always be unceasing in prayer, praying, praying in God in everything, no matter what the circumstances may be. Be thankful and give thanks, for this is the will of God for you, who are in Christ Jesus, the revealer and me mediator of that will. Do not quench, suppress, or subdue the Holy Spirit. Five, that's 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 19. Be thankful for everything and be careful not to quench the Holy Spirit by complaining or you will lose your joy. You can be glad-hearted no matter what your circumstances are. Blind, crippled, crazy, we have to find a way to be thankful. Renew your mind to God's ideals and attitudes see romans 12 and 2 if you spend time in god's presence you will think differently about yourself and about the people around you you will have the mind of christ and be full of his love thank you lord this is 18 minutes long and i have two more pages discipline brings success deuteronomy 4 and 29 but if from there you will seek inquire for and require a necessity. The Lord your God will find him. You will find him if you truly seek him with all your heart and mind and soul. Proverbs 5.23 says that a person will die for lack of discipline and instruction. And in the greatness of his folly, he will go astray and be lost. Hey, Ashley, here's your pie. What kind of I mean, your cream cheese. Ooh. Your um, your cheesecake. Corey made it. I gotta put Ooh, it in. Tell him thank you. Huh? Ooh. Oh, somebody made me a a pie, y'all. Mm, I'm gonna see that right there. Proverbs five and twenty three says that a person will die for lack of discipline and instruction, and in the greatness of his folly, he will go astray and be lost. 
That doesn't necessarily mean that a person will die immediately, but a lack of discipline leads towards deathly situations. In his book, A Pursuit of God, A.W. Tozer said, and in paraphrase, that God puts a desire in us to seek him, but we have to discipline ourselves to seek him. We can become too passive waiting for God to initiate a relationship with us. If you want to have a successful life, discipline yourself to seek God every day. Make up in your mind that you want to have him to come. You want to be in his presence and balance your life. Psalms 94, 12, and 13. Blessed, happy, fortunate to be envied is the man whom discipline and instructs. O Lord, and teach of you, of your law, that you may give him power to keep himself calm in the days of adversity. What a blessing it is to know that blessed is the man whom you discipline and instruct. O Lord, and teach, teach out of your law, that you may give him power to keep himself. He gave you power to keep yourself calm in the days of adversity, in things that come against you. You can keep yourself calm. He has given you power to do so. A person who is lazy and passive is not happy. A passive person is someone who wants something good to happen, but who just sits still and waits to see if it does. Successful people live Discipline lives. First Peter five eight says, "Be well balanced, tempered, sober, and mind of mind. Be vigilant and cautious at all times. The devil would like you to go overboard in some areas, but stay steady, and God will Himself complete and make you what you ought to be. Establish and ground you securely, and strengthen and settle you." So balance your life. You go and you read God's word and let him do that. Talk to him. Let him enter into you and bless you. Read his word. We have to make a decision to seek him every day. He gives us the urge, but we just don't always tap into it. You know, if you think about it, there's a little nudge sometimes that will tell you, you know, read that. Go to your Bible app. It does to me. I can... Go to your Bible app. Go to it, and it is something there to bless you. And I don't do it all the time. Sometimes I might go to Facebook or something else. But then, you know, I always go back. I go back. It's that little nudge. It's that little something that he gives you. It's something that he does to sway you. I got a word for you today. All I need for you to do is pick up my word and read it. And let me bless you. Let me whisper into your ear. Let me show you exactly what I have planned for you. Let me show you what I say or who I say you are. Let me reveal to you what your purpose is. Let me. Let him. We got to take off the limits. We got to stop putting limits on the Lord. We, we, you know, we as men have said over and over, you know, be specific when you're talking to the Lord. Yes, that is true. But then you also, when you're asking for something, you have to ask for God's will to be done. Lord, I know what I want, but God, what is your plan for me? What job do you have planned for me? What is it you have for me to do with the rest of my life? You show me, Lord. Who is the husband or the wife that you have for me? What it is that you need for me to do for you today, Lord? Come and show me, God. I ask that you come and show me. Use me, Lord, because I know that when you use me, you protect me, you cover me, you give me strength, you give me peace, you give me everything that I need to be successful because you would never, ever send me somewhere and not do that. I thank you, Lord. We're going to ask him to come in. We are now into Saturday morning, Lord. We ask that as we lay down to rest tonight, may our mind, our bear, um, mind body, and our spirit be renewed in Jesus' name. May everything work together for your good, Lord. May everything function as it should. Anything that may be wrong, Lord, we ask that they dissipate in the name of Jesus. May it cast back into the hell where it belongs, God. We ask that our bodies be made whole in the way that you intended, God. No matter what it might look like, God, we still know that it can operate in the way that you intended. We thank you, Father. We ask that you bless the husbands, the wives, the girlfriends, the boyfriends. Help them to see what it is you have planned for them, God. 
touch the children, Lord, for they have all gone astray. Not just children, but the parents, too, have lost their way. They have lost that little extra something that they have to discipline their children and show them the right ways to go, God. But we ask that you come right now in Jesus' name. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we ask that you let loose on us, Lord. Bless us, Lord, because we need you. We have lost our way, and we're trying to find our way back. We're trying to find our way back home to the, to the roots, to what the meat of the word is. And the word is we have to keep our eyes on you. You will never leave us nor forsake you. But we have left you, God, and we ask you to forgive us. Everyone under the sound of my voice, Lord, everybody that listens at this video, we just thank you, God. Help them, Lord. They are individuals. You, they are your children. You know what they need, God. And we come to you in prayer right now in Jesus' name to help them, Lord. Dry those kids. Put food on the table. Put a roof over their head. Put shoes on the kids' feet. Put money in their parents' pocket to take care of their children. Get rid of those addictions. Get rid of the porn habits. Get rid of the lying and the cheating and the stealing and all of those things that are just just weighing us down, that are stopping us from living at our potential, God. But we know that you will turn all of these things around for our good, God. We just give it all to you in Jesus' holy and precious name. We thank you, God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father, for your son, Jesus Christ, who reigns. We thank you, God. He is I am, and we're going to give it to him. Just I am. We're going to give it to him. Just. I am is enough to say, I give it to you. I am. He is everything. I am. I am your way maker. I am your healer. I am your father. I am your peace. I am your strength. I am your redeemer. I am the bread of life. I am. I am your friend. I am. Your deliverer. I am. He is. I am. All that you need. Let him come in, y'all. I thank y'all so much for watching. May y'all be blessed and highly favored. May he open the windows of heaven and pour out blessings upon you that you have no room to receive. And those that you don't have room to receive, I pray that you share those blessings. Even the ones that you receive, share them with somebody. Share them, y'all. Help somebody. We're not here to be selfish. We're here to help God do what he needs to do. He don't need us, but we're here. Let him use you. Let him bless you. The more you give, the more he gives. The more he gives, the more you give. We thank you, God. In the name of Jesus, amen, you guys. Thank you, Lord. Y'all, have a good night. I love y'all. Thank you to all of my new subscribers and my old subscribers, all of my family. Y'all are my family. Y'all are not just subscribers. And I love y'all to pieces. May y'all have a blessed night. Bye, sugar.